Welcome to Soapbox. My name is Mauro Di Pasquale. I'm executive director here at WCCA TV, also host of Soapbox, uh, which I'm proud to be able to help assist people bring their stories forward uh, to our community of viewers here in uh, Worcester and, and uh, throughout the world, actually. You're watching us on Cable Channel 194. You're watching us live on Facebook. Uh, you're watching us on uh, uh, WCCATV.com and many other locations online as well. So we thank you for doing that. Uh, we have great stories to share here. I want to thank the sponsors of the show, uh, Sal Curie, Steve Welch, and all the members of our WCCA TV circle of friends for their generous contributions to making our programming for this show and, and many, many others possible here at WCCA TV. You're watching us on Facebook.com uh, slash WCCA TV, The People's Channel. Also, Twitter at WCCA TV 13, and our website, once again, WCCATV.com. Uh, if you're interested in taking a workshop or being an intern here or a volunteer at WCCA TV, uh, we have plenty of classes and activities and programs that go on to help train you and get you familiar with our facility and studio so you can produce your own TV show using our equipment. Uh, in our studios and access to our network. So 100% of our programming is reflecting uh, the interest of our community here, and that's what we're all about, community, public access, television, uh, media, democracy, and action. Uh, today, I think it's going to be a pretty cool show because I, I have uh, something different. We do interview authors from time to time, and today's author is Kim Carrigan, and Kim is uh, uh, with, with uh, Steve Wells, have written numerous books that to improve communication skills uh, of thousands of workplace professionals and now they're bra branching out into uh, students and, and uh, going preparing for college so this is really going to be interesting I'm holding a book up here right now called getting a grip on business writing so I think you're going to get the idea words for the wise um, this is a vocabulary finding alternative words and, and using a better choice of vocabulary, which I'm not doing right now myself personally, which I need to <laughs> use this book. And uh, sound advice for successful writing, punctuation and language made easy. I mean, how many times have you written something and you've gone over it and over it? You're not quite sure if the message is there, if it's muddled a little bit. Um, the, the answers are in here how to really get to the point, how to write the proper email, how to get the, the right punctuation, and make your point um, the way you need it concisely and effectively. And um, this is what these books are all about. Um, there's a book here we're going to find out how it relates. Uh, Mom, in her own words, um, and uh, this is another one of the books put out by the company we're going to talk to today, uh, Kim Carrigan of Corporate Classrooms. Uh, incorporated, uh, and he's my guest today, Kim. Hi, good to see you. Same here, Marl. Thank you for having me. Thank you me so much, Steve. Who's sitting in the um, in the cheering section? Yes, yeah. the cheering section. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hi, Steve. Uh, we have, you know, you, you left the book. I haven't had a chance to go through it fully. Okay. I have to admit, but I did, you know, open it up and I glanced through it. And my first reaction was, I, I got to keep this on my desk. <laughs> exactly. That's what this. we want you to do. Yeah, I okay. need to keep it because it's such a great, great resource. Um, as I explained earlier at the top of the show, so I want to thank you for being here. Maybe you can thank share you. a little bit about your background. I know you told me as we were prepping for the show, you were originally from Clinton. Yep. So give us a little bit of your background, and then I want to dive into, uh, you know, why why communication skills are so okay. important in, in what led you. So tell me about yourself. Well, it is interesting that I am from Clinton, so I was always familiar with Worcester, and um, having gone to Clinton High School, um, I have a lot of ties there and family still in Clinton, and um, when I left, I went to college in Minnesota, and first I got into uh, sales, and I wasn't really that crazy about it, but then uh, I went, and I remember thinking in those days, who would ever want to be a teacher? But I ended up going back to get my teaching um, certification, and I ended up teaching for about four or five years, high school and junior high, and I was teaching English, and I loved it. And I, I surprised myself because I loved it so much. And I made a point then, I said, because I, I was an okay student, but I thought part of the problem was I never understood all this complex language and fancy terms for 
grammar and language usage. So I said, if I ever taught that, I was going to put it in words that was, were so clear that the kids couldn't miss it, the students. Mm -hmm. And so that was my objective as a teacher. Then, as luck would have it, I was offered a job at an educational publishing company, Trend Enterprises out of Minnesota. And Kay Fredericks, who is now the CEO still of this company, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> said to me, uh, would you ever want to do workshops for educators and our corporate personnel as a sales rep? And I said, yeah. And I really liked it. So later on, after I left Trend and went to other companies, um, and then I had gotten to know Steve Wells, I uh, decided, or I guess we decided, why don't we open up a company where we're giving workshops, but we both had a very strong interest in communication skills, and our backgrounds couldn't be more different. Steve is an electrical engineer uh, from the University of Illinois, and he had been vice president of engineering in a company in Chicago. And then I had my sales and ed education background, so we thought it was a good mesh, because Steve felt strongly that technical people needed the material that we ended up developing. And we're very proud of that, because one of our biggest customers um, has been Citrix Systems out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and of Citrix is all over, and we've gone to different locations to give our writing program. And the very first program we did was get a grip on grammar, and that was uh, way back in the 90s, and Prentice Hall came along, knew we were writing a book on grammar, and said, we want to be a publisher. So we said, great. Well, we ended up doing five books over a 10-year period with Prentice Hall Direct out of New Jersey, and they sold really, really well. And then we continued with our workshop business, and the writing book that we developed was based on the Get a Grip on Business Writing workshop, and it became not only the bestseller for Prentice Hall, but after we left them, and the reason we left them is because they were bought out by Pearson in Boston, and Pearson at that point wasn't going to go into career development books like we have. So um, we decided, since we own the copyrights, why not develop you know, more books? And we continued to you know, have books based on the workshops we were giving, and again, that book, Sound Advice for Success Writing, is the new name for Get a Grip on Business Writing, but yeah. it's all the same material that we cover in our workshops. And it's really been uh, a treat to share all the guidelines, because that one is for people who want to know, how do I become more proficient, more conversational, more organized, and certainly more creative? Because quite frankly, business correspondence can be really dull, and it's like, why don't they get creative and start off an email or a letter with an open-ended question or some startling statistic? Or give me a mental picture that shows me a metaphor or analogy and then lead into your main topic. And that's pretty much what we're showing people, how to make your correspondence much more exciting. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it sounds to me that you really have a passion for this. I do. You, you, have, I really you must have do. been a really good teacher. I mean, and you still are if you're doing workshops. It's but, funny. But it's when cool. I was out... It's really funny you should say that because Jim Hastings, the principal of Clinton High School, the, he was telling the kids that I was from Clinton and all this stuff. And um, I, he, I said, first of all, I go like this when you mention the year I graduated. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and I told them that, like, and I, I meant it sincerely. Uh, I went to a college called Minnesota State University of Mankato, and it wasn't very well known in those days, certainly not in New England. But I got a great education. But my dad had gone to Harvard University, and he had graduated economics, and that was the first course I flunked in college. And so <laughs> I, I was definitely not a chip off the old block. Uh, so Jim was explaining to the kids what I had done with my life, and I told them at the end, and I, it was a wonderful a bit of advice, but it reflects my attitude as an educator. And I said, were you disappointed that I didn't go to a big name Ivy League college? And my father told me when I was a sophomore in college, he said, it isn't important where you go to learn. It's important that you learn wherever you go. Yeah. And I always, always yeah. I thought that was great advice. And I share that with yeah. um, both students Absolutely. and workshop people. Good advice. Um, when, when, what's the difference? You know, I, I see there's this book here, which was an earlier publication, Get a Grip on Business Writing. Yep. Critical skills for success. 
I, you know, there's so much I want to ask you. I don't even know if we got enough time. But what, you know, roughly, what what do you need to know for, for what are those skills? Okay, you know, uh, for success in the business world. Today? All right. First of all, people generally find business correspondence pretty boring, yeah. and rightfully so because yeah. people they do it as a, a, a task, like it has to get done. But they're not really right. thinking, well, this is part and parcel of who I am. It, writing as well as speaking, I mean, it's a reflection of your communication quality. And quite frankly, all things considered, the person who has the best communication skills is the person, I believe, who will succeed the greatest mm -hmm. in uh, yeah. his or her yeah. uh, career. And anyway, what we are trying to do is get people to show that, first of all, you have to find your writing voice. Okay, you have to say, what is my writing voice? And as I explained to people in the workshop, your writing voice is your personality. And people should be able to read an email and uh, a letter and just say, oh, I know that's from Marl because it sounds just like him. Okay, or it's from my friend Martha and it sounds just like Martha. Yeah. Okay. You shouldn't have to look at a signature or at the top of uh, an email to f see who it's from. It should be written all over in terms of the words reflecting your personality. So one of the great things that we talk about is conversational style. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, and this yeah. book, by the way, the Red Book, you know, people are probably saying, well, what's the difference? Because they're both dealing with the same yeah, that was my, one of my questions. How do these books okay. differ? Okay, that one is for people so, who don't want to do the work. They, I mean, they want to get some tips, but they don't want to do the exercises. Tips. This one has exercises in each lesson so that you can, reinforce, you can develop and, with this. and that's what we do in the workshop. Yeah. We yeah. have them write out uh, various uh, exercises or emails and letters that reflect right. the concept we're trying to teach. Yeah. I imagine somebody, you know, somebody, I remember when I was in school, somebody, when you do technical writing yep. classes, they would say, you know, try to explain how to, how to use a pen. I mean, it's something that simple. And, it, you know, son of a gun, that's not easy. It isn't you know? easy. And that's, <laughs> Steve has really touted this with the people in engineering because yeah. as a former engineer and, had, you know, he was vice president of engineering, he found that many of the men and women, they were really, really talented, but they couldn't communicate their ideas, particularly yeah. right. on paper. Right. And wow, I mean, talk about using yeah. cliches and right. dated language. And you know, it's all so convoluted. And it's like, get to the point. This, this isn't rocket science, yeah. but you have to be able to explain your main message really in a very short amount of time right. and say, well, to keep people's attention. Right. Yeah. Especially today. I mean, I get literally thousands of emails in a week. I believe it. So you don't have time to read all that. So you right. need a message that's going to yeah. stand out in a way that's meaningful to catch my eye. You know, basically, you know, it has to be. Wait, I mean, it's, it's, when, you, when you were talking about uh, describing a pen, yeah. uh, it, it kind of reminded me of one of the examples I use in the class. Like, all right, you say to or your colleagues, okay, or you're discussing the problem of lack of punctuality in a department. People are coming in late, they're not answering phones, yeah. that type of thing. And But you don't want to hit them over the head because, you know, that's just going to alienate employees. Right. They're going to say, oh, you know, he's full of baloney, and they're, they're not going to receive it kindly. Right, they're going to take it defensively. E exactly, yeah. even the ones who are doing the right thing. Right. So I said, why not start with an open-ended question? Send an email out and say, what happens when only some of our employees project a can-do attitude? I've been wondering that lately as I walk through the office and notice at very critical times phones aren't being answered, people aren't at their desks, and I'm, frankly, colleagues, I'm concerned about this. So what I would ask is that everyone adhere to the strict guidelines we have maintained or that yeah. we have yeah. established for punctuality, and I know I can count on you, and once again, we can be a premier uh, department as we were, always were earlier. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that, you know, you're not really blaming right. them. You're just saying, guys, yeah, we have a late, problem. you're late time or you're not here anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> and see, and I've had worship participants yeah. who say, well, well, wait a minute, why can't I just tell them that 
we're going to can them. Yeah, That's yeah. Because yeah. you want to retain them. You know, it takes more yeah. time to yeah. to have to retrain. Yeah, you got to think right. Exactly. Yeah. You got to think ahead. And incidentally, before I forget, because I, I think it's a very important statistic, there's a guy called Josh Burnoff. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh, writes for the Daily Beast, and last year, October 16th, 2016, this Josh Burnoff apparently had done some research and he said because of the terrible terribly fuzzy writing that people in business do it costs american businesses over 400 billion dollars a year because of these mistakes wow what an in interesting uh, it's wow yeah. i mean it just jumped oh, out at me wow, that's and a lot. the board of Ed uh, not the board of education but the college board they too recently said um that we have a major problem and it's costing uh, American uh, Americans uh, millions of dollars yeah. in lost business. Wow. Yeah, so. you, you know, just if you want to see how confusing writing can be, just look at Facebook and the comments. I mean, people oh, just, and the text. It's just so not uh, yeah, articulate. It's and, so juvenile. And it causes, it causes the wrong reaction, which I'm sure is what you're talking about Absolutely. with business. You know, you make a statement, if it's not perceived correctly, and interpreted right, it could it could be a whole different, yep. could send you in a whole different direction, well, and that's when I go to a workshop. It's so funny. The very early part of the workshop, we're talking about this concept of being conversational, and I'll say, well, you know, one way you can be more uh, conversational is to get rid of all this canned language where it's dated. And so I give these examples. And invariably, people are listening. They'll say, "Oh my God, that's the way I write." Because I'll show yeah. them things like, "For your information, I'm writing." I said, "Why do you need to?" Right, right. I saw that. that. I said, yeah. Th yeah. "That's the whole point of communication. It yeah. is for your please information." Please find the attached. Yeah, exactly. I, I do all that too. It calls. <laughs> please find. And I said, "A, it's not uh, conversational. B, you want to write in the active voice. Active voice is when the subject performs the action, and most of your business sentences would be in the active voice if you really want to." keep people's attention. And then uh, another one, and I see this on applications still in Boston, various companies, they have, please complete your past employment history. Well, right. how can you have a history unless it is in the past? Right, right. You know, I mean, it, it's silly. And yet, when I show these people, we'll show them 40, 50, 60 cliches, they'll say, that's my whole repertoire. Well, they then realize they can take an email and it goes from there down to here or even down to here because they're getting rid of all this extraneous language. Yeah. And, it, you and know, active get to voice. The point. I have to remember. So when you say active voice is subject, it's to the, the subject uh, performance. The subject the action. Perform so give, can you give me an example of that? Sure. Or, I mean, like recently we had all these hurricanes, uh, unfortunately, down in Puerto Rico and Florida and so forth. Uh, Texas, and you say many houses were destroyed by the hurricane. Mm -hmm. Well, that's passive voice because right. though houses is the subject, it's not doing anything, okay? okay, because it's destroyed by the hurricane. So oftentimes you can identify a passive voice sentence because it'll imply or actually state the word by, mm -hmm. okay? Right. But if you turn that around and say, um, Hurricane Maria destroyed many houses in Puerto Rico, or so no, Hurricane active. Maria destroyed many houses and just left it at that, okay? Then it, it's much more succinct, more direct, and you can tell by reversing this, you're saving yourself a couple words. That doesn't sound like a big deal now, yeah, right, but right. in a year's time, you're saving yourself thousands of words yeah. in emails. Yeah, and, and you were saying you get being so more many. direct, right? And yeah. you're being more direct too, and getting that message across. And that's what people want. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you the number of managers say, "I want certain employees when they write to me to get to the point. Don't ramble." Mm. Right. You know, so it's yeah. and it, 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 it it's fun to show them different ways you can approach. There was a lady at Citrix Systems, and this is a true story. Um, <clears throat> I taught her a class or she was in the class on a Thursday, and she said she was like, you know, fairly high up in the ranks in terms of she had been with the company, but she reported to uh, a vice president, and she said, I've been trying to get his attention about a particular project, and I sent him email after email, but he doesn't respond. And so she went through the course, and I heard from her the following Tuesday, and she said, I used 
the ideas you gave about openings and how to get to the subject or to the uh, main message. And she says, I heard from him within an hour. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I mean, well, it, was, it well. was flattering, and yet that's the point. That's what we're trying to do, show people how to reach your goals. And that's how we got into the high school mm -hmm. stuff because, yeah. again. It makes sense, yeah. You know, as I told Jim Hastings, you know, we're trying to show them. It's called, we took that book, okay? Yeah. Now we have the six steps to writing an outstanding college application yeah. essay. Right. And as I tell the students, it only takes one hour, okay? And we go over the six steps, but we have all these examples that relate mm -hmm. to what you would need to say or be asked in terms of responding to the college's inquiry about yeah. you and your background. So I show them all these ex examples. And one of the things um, in these six steps, the kids are learning to get to the point and not repeat what's already on the application. You've already told them about the cheerleading and the student council and being on the soccer team. Now use this essay to express the authentic, genuine you because mm -hmm. that's what they want to see. And then I'll give them all yeah. the examples. And I, I mean, I can see from the reaction of the participants, I was like, wow, yeah. I never thought I could say that. Yeah. And now I'll, I give them some powerful examples. Yeah. Like um, one of the things I did last week, was essentially um, talking about why this college should accept this uh, young person. Um, and then I had, in, as an opening statement or early in the paragraph, where um, the, the student says, having lived in nine foster homes in 13 years, I believe that I can overcome any obstacle in my life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and mm -hmm. then you go on. I right. mean, what a great beginning. Right, right, right. You know, right. that kind of thing. Yeah, that's going to catch you. You know who you're talking to. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. You know, I'm thinking here because I'm in a nonprofit world. This is a nonprofit. Yeah. And by the way, we worked with a yeah. lot of nonprofits. I was going to say, it'd be perfect for grant writing. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Our very first group of Because, I mean, because that's all, you know, you've got to be very clear. We started in Chicago, and we were there for, what was it, 15 years? Okay. Uh, Northwestern Memorial uh, Medical Center, they're funded and supported by the Northwestern Memorial Foundation. And the very first group I did the right were the foundation people who were yeah. the grant writers, the fundraisers, and it, it really spurred me on to work with, we worked with the Red Cross, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Chicago, and one of my really all-time favorite groups because I did so much work for them with the Chicago Youth Centers. And then recently, up here in Massachusetts, um, we did a volunteer program for the uh, Parent Teacher Neshoba Group. Um, and this is um, it was based in Clinton, and we worked with all the preschool teachers and some of the parents who help coordinate this program and show them how to use listening skills to better educate their students yeah. and prepare them for college, or just, I should say their children and prepare them for uh, school. This, this is really uh, fascinating. I mean, I could see these materials. We haven't really talked about these books, and we're almost out of time. Okay. Words for the wise, though. Can yeah, you give that's me a, a very great brief? Little, it's a vocabulary primer. shows you the difference between aberrant and abhorrent and bad and badly gentle and genteel yeah exactly yeah in <laughs> pretty and, cool you're probably wondering how, how this came about and then this one here mom in her own words yeah. that has also spawned i did my mother passed away in 2002 and then i had asked her to complete a journal which she did and i converted it into a memoir which is essentially recapturing her what she said in the journal and she definitely had a writing voice and her personality is all over it. So I did this for my family, oh, and they sense. loved it. But someone said, well, why don't you give a workshop? Well, I'm just this week, I'm giving another, and I've done several, memoir writing workshops in Boston. Wow, that's you know, so, so cool. Yeah, and I mean, by you, the way. Yeah, you, got, you have, you know, this is like a, res, this is a reservoir to feed many, many. And, uh, and there's just a few of these components. that we've touched on, but... We, are, we do leadership programs, we do listening skills, yeah. presentation skills. So there's an array, but we stick to communication because we yeah. believe that's what we know. Yeah. I, you know, we're out of time. All right. Uh, where well, can really people find your this. books on, on Amazon? 
Absolutely. If you go to www.corporateclassrooms.com and you, you'll see books, and as soon as you link onto the books, it'll bring you right to the section of yeah. books and it'll have all the titles you've been talking about. Yeah, folks, I highly recommend these books. I mean, they're, they're fantastic form of communicate. You know, you need to communicate. That's the business we're in here at the TV station. Uh, I'm so much looking forward to, oh, that's uh, great. to studying these here and, and perhaps having. Uh, uh, Kim and Steve come back someday yeah. and do a workshop Maybe here at the TV station. Maybe you can get him uh, to be less camera shy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can do that. Uh, I'd lo love to s learn more from you. I mean, it's a fantastic. Uh, Kim, Kim Carrigan, Stephen R. Wells here of Corporate Classrooms. To learn more, corporateclassrooms.com. Uh, check out the book section there and uh, help yourself to some uh, technical and creative writing and, and really get the point across. Absolutely. Thank you so much for Thank being you, here. Thank you, It was a lot of fun. Pleasure. It was a Absolutely. great discussion. Thank you I uh, love much. talking with you. And until Same next time, much success with this. Amazon.com. Sound advice for successful writing, punctuation, and language usage made easy. Get a grip on business writing. Words for the wise. There's some great books. You're going to be thrilled. Until next time, I'm Mauro Di Pasquale. I look forward to seeing you on WCCA-TV, the People's Channel. 